Now we're into the second video, and in this one it's going to be a very quick video because there's one fundamental concept we've got to get right in our heads here before we move on into getting into some more deeper concepts of electromagnetism. And the thing is here is in the last video we revised our concepts of magnetic fields. Okay, and we talked a lot about magnetic fields, how we can determine the direction of the magnetic field by using our right hand palm rule, sorry, our right hand grip rule around parallel wires or current carrying conductors and around solenoids. And we will get back to those. But for now, we're now going to introduce a concept where what happens when we have a charge that's moving. Because if we have a look at the syllabus, it says analyze the interaction between charged particles and uniform magnetic fields. So the charged particle we're going to make moving here. And then not in this video, but we've got to understand what happens here first between a moving magnetic charge before it comes into contact with the magnetic field, right? And that's going to be in the next video. So let's look at this first fundamental concept. Well, what happens when a charge moves through space? Well, if we have a charge here, here we can see it's a proton at this moment. It's just a single positive charge. And we could, we're going to find out later that we can have different types of charges, right? So we know that if you remember from year 11 that the size of the charge is represented by Q, right? The size of the charge Q, and that's measured in coulombs, capital C, okay? So here, let's just say it's got one positive, so that's going to be a one coulomb charge. But remember, we can have other types of positive particles. We're going to be finding out that we can have what's called an alpha particle. And an alpha particle is just a helium nuclei, the nucleus of a helium atom. And so for the chemists in the room, you know that hydrogen is made up of one proton. Then you have helium, we have two protons, but we also have two neutrons. And that is the atomic uh, nucleus of a helium, right? And so the atomic number is 2, but the atomic mass is 4. So what we do is we write that like this. We go, okay, well, we've got a helium, and then we write a 2 plus. So that's one way of writing it. We can write a particle like that, an alpha symbol, and write 2 plus. That's another way of writing it. We could also write, okay, we've got 4, 2, and then helium with a 2 plus. And this 4 represents the atomic mass, 1, 2, 3, 4, and this lower number represents the atomic number, the number of protons, 1, 2. So we can have this particle called an alpha particle, and that is another particle that's used in physics a lot, and we're going to come through that in the rest of this course and examine how we use those particles to delve into the mysteries of matter, right? So that's later in the course. But here we've got a single charge, but it could be a double charge here. It could be two pluses. No matter what the charge, however, a moving charge creates a magnetic field. So in this diagram here, I've tried to show that this moving charge is going through this way. And as it's moving, it's creating a field. Okay. And notice that I've put the, the opacity, right? I've made this sort of semi-see-through, and this one's nice and dark, to try and give you a sense of this was created first, then that was created second, then that's the latest one that's created. So as the particle's moving along, it's creating these magnetic fields, and those magnetic fields only are there while that particle is there. As soon as the particle moves, the magnetic field disappears. So what's happening here is that... Um, the fundamental concept we want to get is that a moving charge creates a magnetic field. Okay? And we can determine the direction of that field by using our right hand group rule. So if we put our thumb in the direction of the positive, right? The velocity of the positive particle, so let's do that. Right? It's like you're hitchhiking, right? But then your fingers curl in the direction field. And so your fingers should curl in the same direction as what's on the diagram here, right? And it's important that you guys get do this with your hands. Physicists, when they do exams, you see them in the exam and they're doing this, right? They're not doing physics aerobics. They're actually using their right hand palm reel to work out the direction of the field, the movement of the particle, the force, etc. So get used to your hand and it's your right hand. Don't fall into the trap that some students do using their left hand, right? Some students, when they're doing an exam, will be writing like this. Because they're writing with their right hand, they'll then get this with their left hand, and that's going to give you the wrong answer. So 
do something that will help you remember it's the right hand rule. So maybe you can wear a ring on your finger, okay? And when that rings on your finger, you just remember that is my right hand that I'm going to be using for my right hand rules in physics, right? Okay, so let's get back to this concept here where we've got this particle moving through. It's creating a magnetic field as it's moving and we can determine the direction of that field. How can we represent fields, I hear you ask? We know how to represent the direction of current when the current's going through a wire. We did that in the previous video. But we're going to use the same sort of system. We're going to use this arrow analogy. And we're going to come back to this arrow analogy. right? I don't have a picture of it here. I think it's in the next slide. But um, remember I said to you before, if we use arrows, and there's the tip of an arrow, and then we have the end of the arrow which has feathers. And if that arrow was being fired toward you, you would see the tip coming toward you. And so this here is the, is the tip or the front of the magnetic field coming out of the page toward your eyes. And then the arrow cross is the feathers. And the feathers is like it's going away from you. So if you can imagine in your mind's eye, if I try and draw this now, I'm just going to draw it on a slight angle. The field's coming out of the page and then going into the page. Out of the page, into the page. Right? So that's what the field's doing. It's coming out towards you. And if you do that with your fingers, you'll see that your thumb points towards the right-hand side. And so that's telling you that the current is going that direction. So if this was a wire, then electrons, well... We said it was conventional current, so let's just let's just change that to conventional current is going through that way. Then your fingers are going in a direction like this, out of the page and then into the page. And that is the direction of the electric field around that wire, around that conductor. And so <clears throat> if this positive charge was was going, there's the positive charge there, there's the positive charge there, right? If you can now move your mind from a solid copper wire to visualizing that in that copper wire there's actually a movement of an electron or a movement of a charged particle I should say right we're going to say a charged particle let's keep it positive for the moment so you can visualize the movement of that charged particle through the wire then that's the direction of the charge and your field your fingers go out of the page and into the page so that is the fundamental concept that we need to understand when it comes to this course, this module, is that moving charges create a magnetic field. Because it's in the next video that now we're going to see how this magnetic field will interact with an external magnetic field, right? What happens there when two forces combine? What happens? Well, we're going to find that in the next video. See you then. But right, before we go to the next video, I want you to check out more courses that we have here on our YouTube channel, which are just small snippets from the actual bigger courses that we have on thefliptteacher.com. Of course, with all of our courses, we try to incorporate practical sessions. We have study cards. We have posters that you can print off and stick around your room and do a lot more. We have up to 68 or more videos per course. That's like nine to 10 hours of material that really delve deep into the syllabus and looking at essential content, skills, mathematical manipulations, and a lot more. So if you like that, go over to theflipteacher.com and check it all out, and I'll see you in the videos.